Hello and welcome. This is my uh, phase one camera and phase one digital back. I've owned uh, a couple of bodies and three P series backs uh, in my in my time. Um, I use these cameras, uh, this, this camera and back combination for my own personal enjoyment and uh, that includes a bit of landscape work, sometimes photographing, architectural maquettes, um, bit of art repro um, and some some portrait work um, I find it hugely enjoyable to use perhaps you're considering uh, a step into medium format and potentially this system and um, my thoughts my thoughts are as follows uh, I the first the first combination I, pu I purchased was the Mamiya AFD with a phase one P20 back and it was in, it was purchased entirely um, well I won't say it's on a whim because I did my research and I found out what the, what the stats were uh, about it but I had no kind of hands-on previous experience in using it I didn't know uh, what to expect um, and I can say that um, I was uh, it, well, you, you pick up the camera and it's, it's fairly basic it's fairly limited uh, and in fact, this particular model I have now here is the AFD3. That's essentially a rebadge now as a as a Phase One camera. There's little between them. I can't remember um, having had the, the first version of this. So there's, there was really much um, in it between them. Um, it's it's quite bulky. It's quite pleasing aesthetically. I think um, it does have some drawbacks in that uh, it's quite it's quite a tippy camera so you want to be holding it with both hands because it kind of feels it feels uh, it, that it needs supporting from beneath believe it or not you can buy uh, an additional grip for this so you can hold it in uh, in portrait orientation but quite what why you'd want to add more weight and bulk to this setup um, I don't know it's, it's big enough and heavy enough as it is but being as it's a medium format camera um, it's great looking through the viewfinder it's a, a lot uh, bigger uh, and brighter and uh, as I say it, it, it only has one uh, autofocus point it's fairly limited in terms of its feature set but um, I find that with with limitation comes liberation I use uh, I use um, Sony mirrorless cameras and I've got a, a Canon camera that I use um, for my architectural work you know and it's just kind of replete with buttons and as many AF points as you want and stuff and it can do uh, film and it can do images and you kind of call between menu systems it's kind of pleasing in a way just to be able to pick up a camera that that behaves like a camera um, so that's the, that's the body um, do I have anything more to say about the body not really the lens system is to my mind great I mean the the 80 millimeter kit lens I think it's 2.8 kit lens is fantastic fantastically sharp um, the lens I have on here at the moment is a 50 mil shift uh, and you know I've got other shift lenses uh, for my architectural work but this is great it's going to have a Heath Robinson quality about it. it's very primitive and basic I've got no complaints about the sharpness and um, its its performance. It's got a lovely little kind of ratcheted shift mechanism here, and it kind of clicks at 30 degree stop intervals, and you can sort of rise it up or down, left or right, what have you. Um, I find that huge fun to use. The other lens I have is the Mamiya F 1.9, which is a fantastic lens. It's kind of the brightest lens you can get for a medium format camera. Um, uh, but the problem I had with that lens on this particular body is um, the, the focus is, is very hit and miss and, uh, and I find that more enjoyable and very accurate to use with a, a standard film camera I've got a Mamiya um, M645 with a waist level viewfinder and, and that lens with a viewfinder combination is fantastic it's a bit, bit trickier focusing with something like this. Now you're looking through the viewfinder here, you do have some indication uh, as to your kind of focus accuracy. So there is a, a little dot in the viewfinder that tells you if you're uh, in focus according to the central dot. 
and there were an, uh, there's an arrow either side of that dot which indicates to you which way you need to, to rack your focus in order to, um, to, to achieve your, your focus. Um, so that's the focusing, the performance of it, and the, the lenses. Um, the, back, the back's interchangeable, so you can take this back off and you can have a film back. In fact, I did have a film back uh, on this uh, model for some time, um, and that, which I've since sold because I've got a dedicated 645 film camera. Um, and uh, but the the, the real uh, workhorse part of it is is the digital back. So the digital back will, will come off. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a, it's a, a slider and a button which you have to press in combination to take off. I'm not going to take it off even for for this demonstration because I don't like doing that. And it kind of exposes the sensor. Um, but if you're thinking of getting a P series back. Uh, just do your homework about it because each one is is very different from the other. So I started with a P20 back. And now the P20 back, the characteristics of that is that it's a square crop back. So it's like a it's like a Hasselblad. You know, it's a square it's a square image that you get. 16 megapixels. Um, the base ISO is 50. Uh, with any of these older models, and I don't know about the newer models, but certainly with any of these old, older models, I wouldn't go beyond the base ISO if you can help it. Um, I used it ISO 50, ISO 100 maximum, but not beyond that. I mean, the, the, the noise is unacceptable on, on, on these backs. And that would uh, that P20 back would, would be characterized as a, a fat pixel back. If you look on the forums online, you hear a lot, see a lot of talk about fat, fat pixel backs. And this uh, uh, purported kind of magical quality they have to them. So you can imagine taking a, a picture with a fairly basic camera and with a preview such as you get from one of these screens. Uh, I wasn't expecting much um, out of that. But when I came to open it on the computer, um, I, I gotta say, uh, the images were, were just fantastic and quite unlike anything that I could get out of a squeeze out of a camera, um, a high end 35 mil camera um, at the time. So at the time I was using a, uh, a Canon 5D Mark II, which is now kind of relegated to my kind of point and shoot holiday kids and, and stuff. But at that time it was my, uh, my workhorse professional camera and the, the pictures simply don't compare. Even, even a 2005 um, Phase One P20 just kind of uh, blew away at the, the, the Canon in terms of its image quality. Particularly, what I liked were, was the, the the richness in the in the blacks, um, and some of the the portraits with a with a more muted palette and softer tones had had uh, incredible painterly quality to them which I, I just find I found I could not match with um, a 35 mil camera system uh, similarly I, I took it out um, I took it out to Kew Gardens and took a picture of the Sackler Crossing I'll stick that on the screen I took that out and, and took a picture of, of the Kew Gardens and again you take a picture um, I believe that was a, a long exposure I think it was a 30 second exposure that taken with this 50 mil lens and and you, you know, you, you take a picture and you don't expect much of it when you review it on the screen and you open it on the, on the computer and it's just like a fine art painting. So it's really fantastic, uh, fantastic digital back. Um, the drawback with the P20 is that you are limited to an exposure time of 30 seconds maximum. Beyond that, the image just starts to fall apart and degrade. Uh, it just kind of crumbles. Um, and I, I realized that when I, I took it out to Norfolk, I got up, um, I got in-laws in Norfolk. So I, I got up early one day, drove the car down to Caister Beach and uh, wanted to get a certain look, long exposure photo. And I, I just couldn't get it with the combination with the, with the limitations of the ISO and limitations of exposure time that uh, I was, um, I had to wrestle with. I just couldn't make the variables work to get a long exposure, clean photo. And um, being as I, I kind of learned to drive rather late in life, I don't enjoy dry, driving. Having got up at, you know, the crack of dawn in order to 
get in the car and get to the beach and, uh, and get a shot that I wasn't entirely happy with. It led to my decision to change the bags. So from the P20 I went to a, a P45. Uh, the, the P45 back is a full frame back, so it's a full 645 uh, sensor. A lot more megapixels, it's 39 point something megapixels. I believe that ISO, the base ISO is 50 on that again. Now, <clears throat> with the more megapixels means this, uh, you get a smaller uh, sensor sight. Um, so the pluses, in summary again, the pluses are in a higher resolution, uh, full frame, and also it gives, gives you a, a few minutes of exposure time, so you, the exposure can run into several minutes with that. So I thought that was sufficient. I thought I could retain that incredible image quality I got from the fat pixel back within the P45 uh, system. And unfortunately, I, I was a little bit disappointed with the colors that I was getting out of it. It just seemed to kind of lose that extraordinary quality that I had from the, the P20. Uh, and I traded that off for, for megapixels. Well, I mean, as you know, this, these, this day and age, megapixels are the cheapest chips. So you, can, you can get a high megapixel camera. Um, for, for nothing these days, uh, I think the, the Sony have just come out with a 60 megapixel, uh, 35 uh, millimeter sensor and uh, phase one currently do 150 megapixels. For me, megapixels, you know, that's that's just burdensome. burdensome. I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in the intrinsic uh, quality, uh, the, the color of the image and um, and, and in a sense, what you do with the fax fixer back is it resolves, it resolves the lenses better as well. I I, I believe I'm led to believe that uh, you know the the, the sharpness, um, the edge sharpness of the sensor is um, is resolved well by having that that larger photo site. So I had the opportunity uh, following purchasing the P45. I decided to. to change again. I still wanted to retain this camera because um, it's, it's such fun to use. Uh, and I've most recently bought a P21 Plus back, which I'm hoping is going to be the perfect combination of the attributes of the two. So uh, with, a, with, a, with a Plus series back, so you've got the P Plus backs, these uh, the Plus series backs uh, enable you to have an exposure time noise-free of uh, an entire hour so I can do very long exposures and I, I know that when I get them home on the computer they're going to be nice and clean and uh, I've got all that time to play with it's um, in terms of the resolution the P21 is uh, 18 megapixels has a base ISO of 100 um, but it still has that 9 micron photo site um, back so it will have all the image quality of the P20 it's got a larger sensor coverage, although it's not entirely full frame, I believe. Um, you've got a base ISO of 100, which is kind of more useful to work with. 18 megapixels, I'm not going to sniff at uh, having a few extra megapixels. And, um, and of course, a long exposure. So I'm going to take this on holiday with me. I'm going to Norfolk up again for the summer holiday, and I will get up early, take it to the beach and uh, put a few pictures on the screen so you can compare it to what you've just seen before. Thanks for watching and I hope this uh, helps you. If you're thinking of purchasing one of these, um, be advised that as of 2018 phase one no longer offer a, a service on the P series back. So, you know, if something were to go wrong with it, it is an inert device, but of course you do have a screen and you do have buttons and they will wear out over time, presumably. Just bear that in mind. You're not going to get um, service on, on these, at least not readily. Um, but you know the the system's getting old, and it's it's very you know the bargains do come up on eBay from time to time. Um, I can certainly recommend using this, and uh, you know it's it's a dual camera system. You can use it with a digital back, or you can use it with uh, with a film back, should you wish. So. Um, you'll be happy either way. Thanks for watching.